Hey friends, I want to start my Christmas message with a little trivia question. Who in the Christmas story is an equine owner? Think about that for a second. And you probably are thinking Joseph or Joseph and Mary because we always think of them and the donkey. And maybe they were or maybe they weren't. We know they're a very poor couple and so they may not have been able to afford a donkey. They may have had to walk all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem and not been able to, to ride at all. But I want us to think a little bit about Joseph as an equine owner, Joseph almost as a cowboy. Because we are told in Matthew, the second chapter, that Joseph was a righteous man. And I want to think about cowboy righteousness. If you think about in the Old West, particularly in the movies, you've got the cowboy who's the good cowboy. He's the righteous cowboy. And he may go through all kinds of trouble and trials and whatnot, but at the very end, he's going to come out on top. And he's going to come out on top because he is going to defeat his enemy in some pretty powerful, probably violent way. It usually ends in a gunfight, and the good guy, the righteous cowboy, ends up killing the bad guy, the unrighteous cowboy. And I want to think about that in terms of the Christmas story. Because we're told that when Joseph is in Nazareth and Mary is in Nazareth before all the Bethlehem stuff starts, that, and Matthew puts it this way, Mary was found to be with child. Now a lot of times we think about that meaning that Mary comes to Joseph and tells Joseph, I had this visit with an angel and the angel told me that I'm going to be the mother of the Messiah. But Matthew doesn't tell us that. Matthew just tells us that Joseph discovers that Mary is with child, and we don't know how he discovers that. Maybe he hears a rumor in town. Maybe he notices that she gets sick every single morning. Maybe he sees an incriminating bulge in her, on her tummy when uh, the wind blows her robe. We really don't know how it is he knows, but he discovers that she is with child. And the very next verse says, because he was a righteous man, he chose to put her away quietly, or some translations will say he chose to divorce her quietly. That's a pretty amazing thing for him to do. Long before the birth of Jesus, Joseph is illustrating and demonstrating that he already understands God. He already understands Emmanuel, God with us, because he's already acting in a Christ-like manner before Christ ever comes. Because truthfully, Joseph, as a righteous man, could have demanded that Mary be executed, that she be stoned in the public square, completely humiliated and stoned in the public square. Because as far as he was concerned, she had cheated on him. I mean, come on. He finds that she is with child. There's only one explanation. He knows he is a father. It has to be that she's cheated on him. And he doesn't know any differently. He hasn't heard from the angel yet. He has to decide what to do with this information. And he chooses to divorce her quietly. He could have chosen to have her stoned. Leviticus 20 says that that is the proper punishment. That's the righteous thing to do. In a sense, that's cowboy righteousness. She's the bad one. He's the good one. He does away with the bad one. But instead, he chooses to divorce her quietly. And he's really choosing to, to bring scorn on himself. Later, when it is found out that she is pregnant, people are going to perhaps say, he's the father, and maybe he's going to get stoned. Or maybe they say, well, she cheated on him, and he didn't even have the guts to be able to do what he should have done. He's not a righteous guy. He should have had her stoned. But instead, he does the right thing that was the hard thing that was the godly thing. He chose to say, I'm not going to make a fuss. Even though she has wronged me, I'm going to find a way to be graceful. And so he resolves to divorce her quietly. Well, the next thing he knows, he has a dream and an angel comes to him and the angel says to him that she is going to be the birth of the, the, the mother of the Messiah and that, that he should marry her and that, that he should go forward with their plans. And so knowing that this is a message from God, he chooses to do that. But I want to linger on what he does before he hears the angel's call, before he has that dream. And he does the good thing that is the right thing, that is the hard thing, that is the godly thing. And as you think about us at Christmas time, I invite all of us to think about the ways that God is calling us to do the good things that are the hard things, that are the godly things, to demonstrate that we understand Emmanuel. We understand that God is with us. And so my prayer for you and my prayer for me is that this Christmas season, 
that you will allow Jesus into your heart. And you allow the Spirit of Jesus to transform your spirit so you can do the good thing that is the right thing, that is the godly thing. Have a merry, joyous, and holy Christmas.